Hello students, myself Om Prakash Kattel and you are welcome to Biology Reward. Today uh, we are discussing regarding 12th class unit biotechnology and topic for discussion is the tools of recombinant DNA technology. In tools of recomb uh, D uh, recombinant DNA technology in previous video we have learned regarding the uh, enzyme, especially restriction endonuclease enzyme, which is the tool of recombinant DNA technology. Then we have discussed regarding the uh, cloning vector. And third important thing is, this is competent host. So, what is competent host? How the uh, host is made competent? And what are the different methods to make the host to competent to insert the recombinant DNA? So that's we have to discuss here the competent host. Uh, students, uh, uh, we have learned regarding the uh, foreign DNA. This foreign DNA is taken out from the one microbes. And similarly, plasmid DNA is also taken out from the plasmid DNA from the microbes. And these both are combined together. So when the foreign DNA and the uh, plasmid DNA, these both are combined together. So it is the plasmid or vector DNA we are saying. So this vector DNA, vector DNA I am mentioning here. So this vector DNA and it is a foreign DNA. This both DNA are combined. And this DNA is formed, it is called the recombinant DNA. Now this recombinant DNA we have to introduce into the other organism. This is the one organism and this is the organism suppose I am taking as a bacteria. So this bacteria is called the host because this recombinant DNA we have to introduce in this bacteria. So when recombinant DNA is introduced into this bacteria, so this process where recombinant DNA is introduced to the bacteria or to the host. In such cases, host must be uh, ready to accept this recombinant DNA. And if the host is ready to accept the recombinant DNA, and it is called the competent host. What do you mean by this? Competent host means a host is ready to accept the recombinant DNA. So, easily recombinant DNA can introduce in the host. So, it is called competent host. Students, this competent host for the transformation with recombinant DNA. It means this competent host is required to transfer this recombinant DNA. That is the meaning of transformation with the recombinant DNA. Such a type of host common host, host are used, so host may be through uh, recombinant DNA is introduced into the host. So, which are the organism are host, are competent host. So, that competent host may be E. coli, Escheria coli, it may be unicellular algae, uh, unicellular uh, fungus, yeast, Competent host may be eukaryotic cells such as the plant cell and animal cell. So these are the some specific host where recombinant DNA is entered. Out of all these, popularly host which is used in the recombinant DNA technology is E. coli. This E. coli gram negative bacteria is the popularly used host in the recombinant DNA technology. So popular popular host used in the recombinant DNA technology is E. coli gram negative bacteria. Question is asked why the E. coli bacteria is popularly used as a host. It is the competent host in uh, use in the recombinant DNA technology because E. coli it is easy to handle first point E. coli in laboratory, it is very easy to handle and grow also. Second, it accepts the varieties of vectors. So, in such type of 
E. coli host bacteria. Here I am mentioning the host is E. coli. So why the E. coli used in the recombinant DNA technology? Because it is easy to handle and grow. Second, this E. coli can easily accept the variety of vector. So any vector, vector may be plasmic, vector may be bacteriophage, vector may be lambda bacteria. So this E. coli accept the any vector. So, so through the any vector, this DNA can be introduced. So the combinant DNA can be easily accepted by the E. coli due to the, uh, by the any variety of the vector. And third important thing is E. coli is the popularly host because bacteria double their number in every 20 minutes. Stolz and Magelson experiment we have learned the uh, bacteria double their numbers in every 20 minutes and due to this characteristic the E. coli gram-negative bacteria is considered to be popular competent host in recombinant DNA technology. Students, second important part uh, here it is the DNA molecule. When DNA molecule is DNA molecule is hydrophilic molecule. DNA molecule is the hydrophilic molecule. So it cannot pass through the cell membrane. So the host is made competent to take up the DNA. What happened? If the as I told you, this is the foreign DNA. And this is the vector DNA. This is the vector DNA. So this foreign DNA and here I am writing foreign DNA. And it is the vector DNA. Vector. <coughs> this is foreign DNA. Foreign DNA. And it is a vector DNA. So when foreign DNA and vector DNA are combined together, so we are getting this one, it is called recombinant DNA, RDNA, this recombinant DNA. So this recombinant DNA, we have to introduce to the host cell. This is the host cell and host cell I have taken here, E. coli. So this recombinant DNA, we have to introduce to the host cell, but this DNA, is hydrophilic molecule and it cannot pass to the cell membrane of the host. So this cell wall, here is a cell wall, the cell membrane is there, cell wall is here. So in bacteria E. coli, there is a membrane which we use to say a cell membrane. So the DNA is hydrophilic molecule and this molecule is can, uh, it cannot pass through the cell membrane. The DNA molecule not pass to the cell membrane. So, the host is made competent to take up the DNA. So, what may be done? What should be done to enter the DNA? Because DNA molecule is hydrophilic and easily it will not enter into the host cell. So, what are the method by which this host is made competent so it can accept the it can accept the recombinant DNA. So this is called host is made competent to take up recombinant DNA. So what should be done in this host? So that host can accept this recombinant DNA and this method there are some method through which the E. coli or this host become ready to take up the recombinant DNA and these methods are called methods of making competent to the host. So let's to see what are the different methods then the host cell it will uh, take up the recombinant DNA or accept the recombinant DNA. In our uh, class 12 syllabus we have the some common method. First method is treatment with divalent cation. Treatment with divalent cation calcium chloride. So, if this E. coli bacteria, we have to make competent to this 
so that it can accept the recombinant DNA. This is our recombinant DNA and this recombinant DNA in bacteria it should do not enter due to the cell membrane. Cell membrane is here so this recombinant DNA is do not enter. So this is the our E. coli bacteria are we are using here host competent host. So this competent host competent host is treated with the divalent divalent cation. So this type of E. coli is kept in the one solution which contains the calcium chloride. So this host competent host uh, this host it treated with the divalent. So it is called treatment with the divalent cation that is calcium chloride. So the E. coli and in this E. coli calcium chloride divalent cation is mixed and due to the mixing of that one what happened? It makes the holes in the wall of the bacteria and it enhances the efficiency of the entry of the recombinant DNA. So if E. coli bacteria is treated with the calcium chloride then it makes the small small hole in the wall of the E. coli. By treating the E. coli with the calcium chloride makes the small small holes. These are the small holes are occurred in the wall of E. coli. And now what happened? Due to this hole, this easily it increases the efficiency to enter the recombinant DNA. So now the recombinant DNA will be easily introduced in the host. So this first method where the host is made competent by treating the calcium chloride because the calcium chloride is make the holes in the wall of the E. coli. And this method, three steps are here. Number one, incubation of cell with the recombinant DNA on ice. So in this process, first one what happened, once the holes are made, now what happened, recombinant DNA plus this host cell, they are mixed together in the ice. Once the small holes are made, so after making these small holes, now this is the uh, bacteria and which is having the small small holes by the treatments of the calcium chloride. Now what happened, this bacteria along with the recombinant DNA, this recombinant DNA. So incubation of cell with recombinant DNA on I. So this is kept together in the ice solution first. So recombinant DNA and the competent host, they are kept incubation of the cell with recombinant DNA on ice, this one. After some time, it is followed by heat shock. Heat shock is given, so about 45 degree temperature is increases here. So first recombinant DNA and this the holes are present in the wall of that host bacteria is kept in the ice. Immediately after this, 42 degree temperature, the heat shock is given here. And if it shock is given to it, after this heat shock, putting back on ice. Again, this is kept in the ice. And by this treatment, this recombinant DNA easily enters easily enter inside the bacteria. So this is the procedure where the E. coli host made competent by treating with the calcium chloride. This is the first method. Second method is micro injection method. In this uh, micro injection method, this is the recombinant DNA is directly injected. In this one, micro injection method, recombinant DNA is directly injected into the nucleus of the animal cell. Suppose this is the animal cell, 
and this is the nucleus of the animal cell. This is the animal cell and this uh, nucleus of the animal cell recombinant DNA directly injected into the nucleus of the animal cell using glass micropipette. Some injection like injection likes one micropipette which is having diameter 0.1 to 0 0.5 in micron. So in such cases what happened? You should understand what is micro injection. It is recombinant DNA. This is the recombinant DNA or we are saying the RDNA. This RDNA is taken in the some injection like structure. It is called the micro pipette. So this recombinant DNA through this micro pipette it is introduced in the directly it is introduced in the nucleus of the animal. It is the nucleus of the animal cell. So that method it is method in which recombinant DNA is introduced. Recombinant DNA is introduced directly to the nucleus of the cell and it is called micro injection. And in this uh, micro injection we require the one glass micro pipette which is having the 0.1 to 0.5 micron in diameter. But this micro injection technique it requires expensive equipment. This is the demerit of the technique. And trains master, it means trained technicians are required to perform the this micro injection technology to make the host to competent. So for competent host, now here competent host is the animal cell. So animal cell will receive or accept the DNA by this method. So it is the micro injection is the second procedure through which the recombinant DNA is directly introduced into the nucleus of the animal cell and this is called the micro injection. But this technique is very expensive technique. Equipments are very expensive and trains masters are required to perform this micro injection method. Third important thing is biolistic or gene after a micro injection method of introduction of a combinant DNA to the host cell. We have another method it is called biolistic method or gene gun method. In this method the plant cells are bombarded with high velocity 1400 feet per second with micro particles of gold and tung R tungsten, gold R tungsten coated with recombinant DNA. So in biolistic method what happened we have to understand. First one uh, in plant cell, suppose this is the plant cell and the plant cell is a host cell. And in this plant cell we have to introduce the recombinant DNA. So this is the recombinant DNA which is having foreign DNA and the vector DNA. So first one micro particles of gold or tungsten. So this type of micro particle of gold or tungsten. This micro particle of gold or tungsten, they are coated with the this recombinant DNA. They are coated with the recombinant DNA. It means they covered with the recombinant DNA. So gold or tungsten particles are coated with the recombinant DNA. And now this is with the high velocity. It's about the 1400 feet per second. This with high velocity, these particles are these particles are bombarded on the plant cell. So when they are bombarded on the plant cell, 
this recombinant DNA fits come in the plant cell because your host is plant cell. So this method in which micro particle of gold and tungsten are coated with the D recombinant DNA and then they introduce to the plant cell with the uh, with high velocity and it is called biolistic method or gene gun method. This method is having some advantages over the micro injection method. By this method, the gene transfer to many cells in the same time. By accelerating the thousands of the particles, such type of thousands of gold or tungsten particles are taken and they are coated with the DNA and then this type of recombinant DNA can be introduced into the many cell in same time. It is the advantage of biolistic method. Second, the biolistic method is used for recombinant DNA of any size, of any cell, as well as it can be used for the cell types. So this method can be used for the yeast. It is used for the host E. coli. Or this method can be used for the plant cell and animal cell also to introduce the recombinant DNA. Fourth method is use of disarm pathogen. So in use of disarm pathogen, so first we should understand the what do you mean by disarm pathogen? So the pathogen which do not cause the disease and it get inactivated or it is altered. Such type of pathogen is called disarm pathogen. One example uh, TI plasmid and this TI TI plasmid is a disarm pathogen. Similarly, retrovirus is also one disarm pathogen. So TI plasmid are agrobacterium in plant and retrovirus in animal, these are the disarm pathogen. And this disarm pathogen, uh, TI suppose, this TI causes the tumor. It causes the tumor in the plant. Tumor disease is plant. So the TI is alert, uh, altered. Or TI is inactivated. So when TI is inactivated, it unable to cause the tumor disease. So this type of tumor is inactivated or altered and it do not cause now disease. It is called disarm pathogen. So in uh, insertion of recombinant DNA, uh, recombinant DNA to the host cell, this type of disarm pathogens are used. So let's you take an example now. <coughs> I am having the this recombinant DNA, this recombinant DNA, which is having foreign DNA and vector DNA. And this recombinant DNA, first one, it is uh, TI plasmid or uh, you are taking retrovirus. We are taking retrovirus. So generally the retrovirus, they attack on the host cell. This is the host cell. So when retrovirus, they attack on the host cell. This is the So now what is going on? The This recombinant DNA, recombinant DNA is introduced in the retrovirus. Now the retrovirus is disarm pathogen and through the retrovirus, this recombinant DNA is introduced into the host cell. So this technique in which the retrovirus RTI plasmid they infect the host cell and they transfer the recombinant DNA in the host. So this is called use of disarm pathogen for the transfer of recombinant DNA in the host cell. So thus we have the four methods to make the competent host. One, treatment with the calcium chloride cation. 
which makes the pore in the wall of the bacteria and easily the recombinant DNA is introduced. Second, micro pipette method, uh, micro uh, micro injection method in which the directly recombinant DNA are introduced in the uh, nucleus of the animal cell. And third method is biolistic method. Here, particle or tungsten or gold are coated with the recombinant DNA and they are directly bombarded on the plant cell and through this recombinant DNA enter into the host or plant cell. And fourth method is the disarm pathogen, they infect the host cell and they help as the transfer of recombinant DNA. So it is all about the uh, competent host.